Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am here with a very cool unboxing and I was like, oh I'm not going to do any more unboxings and I'm not, but this is something special. This is an exception. <laughs> There's something more to this. Uh, it's, it's, it's up there with decks, like I don't have this one, but the Scarlet Imprint, uh, Sola Busca, Tarot Special Edition that they did with, um, what's the guy's name? Damn, I'm pulling a blank. I want to say his name is. No, no, but they but they released a. <laughs> no, let's not go there. <laughs> um, but they released a deck, and as well as uh, Anathema Publishing's uh, Serpent Icons deck, uh, which apparently the artist is working on the minor arcana, but the majors are pretty cool on their own. And the book is a whole thing of like tarot, grimoire, witchcraft, the whatever you know, all that. I haven't worked through that um i haven't read it but it's like it seems a bit more out there than what i'm used to but for tarot I'm, i was really interested to see what new things they were going to add to it what's another one uh the uh scarlet imprint also released the uh what's it called the divine gypsy mother with uh balthazar black uh and that was a little oracle deck with a really nice book as well and this kind of goes with it and if you know what this is if you've seen this around if you backed this you know what this is this is the austin osman spare tarot or rather it's the book called the lost envoy which is pretty much discussing austin osman spare's tarot and so this is all that comes with it i'm like let's just share like all the stuff that came with this i didn't even know i was getting all this stuff i was like okay i'll just get the deck and the book and hardcover and we'll see what I, and I guess with the stretch goals and everything, or maybe the tier that I backed, I got a lot more. You're like, what's this? I'll show you right now. So you get, you know, your postcards, typical Kickstarter stuff, a nice little, a nice little pin as well. Uh, and you'll see why these are different colors as well in a bit. Uh, and then the bag with AOS on there, Austin Osman Spare or Spare. Spare. So if you don't know who that is, if you've never heard of his name, you've probably, if you have the nameless one, Oracle and Tarot deck, you've probably, and you read through the book about the sigil part, you've probably, you've, she, uh, Alexandria Huntington mentions him there, uh, he, because he's the one that pretty much popularized sigils as we know it today. He, like, his way of sigil magic, I believe. I could be completely wrong. This is all coming from, like, what little things that I've, like, researched on it. But he's pretty big in, he's a pretty big name in Sigil Magic, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I believe uh, Foolish Fish has a video on that as well, on sigils and making sig sigils for yourself. But anyways, so this is uh, a, a dual little guidebook that is a companion, a source book for uh the tarot and this is uh, the tarot uh, by sl mcgregor mathers i have this book already in this big tarot book that comes with the pictorial key to the tarot the the books by the curtis uh by the curtises i believe that's their names uh uspensky's uh book on the tarot it's all like in one big omnibus of these classic books on the tarot and this one is also in there as well but this is the book that spade used for his major arcana um, and this is a fortune telling book, uh, or a fortune telling by cards, a, a playing card fortune telling book uh, by uh, Raposa, or someone that goes by the name Raposa. I don't believe it's uh, it, that's their actual name, but anyways. Uh, so yeah, this and this is essentially a copy, a facsimile of that book. Uh, and you can see there. So I don't want to show all of it, and it's you know, and then you flip it to the other side, you get the much thinner for the tarot and all that so yeah and then it comes with the cards we'll get to that later because the main thing about this the cards were like a honestly like a fun bonus maybe i feel i don't know it was like a whole mission and a half apparently to print it because of how the cards are seen as you've seen within the postcards here um so yeah it comes and again the box here really big i don't know what to do with it <laughs> I'm so far, ke I'm keeping everything in the box, because this is, again, I, I don't want to lose it, but I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I, I'm of two minds, we'll see what I do with it, I might use it for storage, we'll see, but it's, it's, 
it's nice-ish. I kind of, my bougie ass would have wanted something a little bit, like, I, I would have, I would have wanted wood. Anyways, anyways, no, it's still cool. It's simple. It's black. It's, it stands out. I'm like, if I wanted it to be on display, it'd be like just plain facing out where you see the bright white letters of AOS on it. And you're like, what is that? And the book too. I love this new book cover. I'm not sure if this is how the original hardcover was. And if that first original cover, like it was just the cover and like, you know, the, the dust jacket was, um, uh, this pattern here that they have on the, on the, on the, I have no idea what these pages are called. <laughs> the inner pages, the in the inner pages there. Um, but it was that, and it was just there, and it says on there, uh, the Lost Envoy. And I said, here, it's the Lost Envoy, the tarot deck of Aus Austin Osman Spade, uh, edited by Jonathan Allen, uh, published by Strange Attractor Press, right here. Um, and... Yeah, and this guy, he is, of course, you see him on the cover here. I believe he's on the Ace of Diamonds. Um, and this book is pretty much, I'm just going to show you the table of contents. I don't want to show too much because it is uh, a compilation of from a bunch of different authors. We have here Helen Farley, who wrote A Cultural, um, a cultural History of the Tarot. Uh, and yeah, and there's... Uh, a bunch of again like a bunch of different authors here and as like an introduction even like alan moore and kevin o'neill is there uh and yeah and so here we finally get to the to the actual tarot which gives you you see like all the images here this i think again it's just a republication of the lost envoy so it was just this they never actually printed the deck when the lost envoy first came out and so uh and then this is just essentially what's written on uh, on each card. It's a very much like it, this deck was essentially a. Mm, I'd have to read the book to say for sure, but from what I'm gathering, it almost seems like a study practice deck and not like an actual like deck that was meant to be published to the public honestly but I'm, I'm pretty sure my friend Annika uh nobody here uh she doesn't go by that her channel isn't called that anymore it's uh but you know her if you're subscribed to her you followed her whatever she now does stationary stuff and I think she her, her channel too my son on my bookshelf I think is what it's called is one of her channels she has a few others uh but she has this book and she talked about this book um and she would she she i'm sure she's read it um and she talks about you know the so she she she'd probably like hop in probably in the comments and be like it's actually this <laughs> and be like okay because it's a lot of like keywords on it with very minimal art but it has its own aesthetic it, austin spot it has has a a very unique style to his art that once you see it, you're like, yeah, that's him. It's weirdly like squiggly, almost like Arthur Rackham's, but like less detailed. It's let, let, let me let me zoom in real quick for you. Yeah, because here we are, you know, so this is like it's it's there's there's a lot going on. here. I have to read the book to really. But this is just, again, first impressions, like what I've seen out of the box. And so. Yeah, as you can see, the majors, yeah, sure, you got your majors, but here, like, here, the high priestess is, there's no body, but what we're getting here is on the sides where they connect to other cards next to it. However, one would think that he would also include the bottoms here, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of writing here. You can see there's notes here, so I think this was, like, a deck that he would use to practice, you know, of course, he didn't do a whole body, but he had to include uh, the, the Empress's breasts, of course, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so these are going to connect to other cards, like as you can see here. Now, the problem here, as you can see here in one of in my printing, uh, this card, the line wasn't so perfect, but it's fine. It's whatever, um, which they're saying like this is what made it so difficult to print out. Uh, and probably was why it was never initially published at the time because yeah, well I'm like we had the Morgan Greer, and we have well, 
it's like we do but not to this extent because it's like these very fine lines that have to carry on like from here to the next card you know um and it's 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 basically like th that was what was the biggest challenge to make this deck um now whether i'll read with it i don't know it's my my i'm itching to kind of want to try and read with it but i am very unsure now this is one of the cards that was lost and it was recreated there was a photograph of it and so they hired an artist to pretty much like redraw it and redo it there's a picture of it and you can see the side by side comparison and it's like it's pretty much the same um but this is one of the cards that was that was lost uh to it um they had it but then they lost it where it is who knows um so yeah i mean you can see is the death card is like very telling of like the muscles and the sinewy type of limbs here the you know just kind of show his style quite well the devil is is wild this is very much him <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, the weird legs are kind of like forming a pyramid the mercury symbol right here uh, in his genital area which is very reminiscent of th this is very reminiscent in general of the uh, Napal uh, tarot the revised new art tarot cards by J.A. Knapp and M. Manley P. Hall um, so there, there could be some influence the the Hebrew letters as we see we started with the magician for Aleph but we don't really see any other letters from what I've seen so far I mean I've only seen Aleph for the magician and yeah who knows like I said it's it's, it's sort of like his own annotated tarot this moon card is really cool And again, his very thin sun card, like the thin people, the weird looking people, like it, they just, yeah, he has a certain way of drawing people. So yeah, now we're getting into the minor arcana and the minor arcana aren't wands, cups, swords, they're playing cards of the French suit. Uh, and as you can see here, we're switching colors to the of, of, on the card backs here. So here's the majors. They're all purple except for this card. And I thought like, what is this supposed to be? And it's supposed to be the Inquirer. It's supposed to be like a, I guess a sort of significator card. Uh, so it offers a very interesting style of reading if you want to try reading with this deck because it's like, um, what, like, if you have, again, all these cards, it's like, you'd have to know to, like, to, to prevent bias picking the cards. Like, here we have, like, again, these pink ones, and you're like, ooh, one of these is a pink, like, you know, what if someone, or, or there's possibilities. One here is you randomly pick, you lay out the cards first as, like, oh, there's a lot of black back cards maybe you can read into that or something this is me like before mind you disclaimer 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 i have not read the book <laughs> to like see what it is and like any of the source books that go with it um and as to why these decisions were made if that was even recorded because spotty was as an artist very unrecognized so yeah his his people i was like i seeing this card i was like i don't really like him I do like him. I like a man with a beard. He looks very much like Greek. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's giving, it's like daddy, stranger danger, you know, like I, you know, but again, we'll leave it at that, you know, <laughs> as you can see all the words here, you can pause and read them if you can. Uh, I don't know if they'll be in like clear detail here uh, of you know all that but look at look at like it's so much going on and it reminds me a bit of the uh what's it called um oh gosh i'm drawing a blank on it it's it has these really beautiful majors and court cards but the minor arcana the ace to the 10 are very much like this keywords galore maybe some scribblings throughout but a lot of white space gosh what's it called it has a weird name too, but it's from the, I believe it's from the same publisher 
uh, I believe it's from the publisher Arnell Arts. I cannot remember. I'm sure people are going to be like, it's this, it's this. I'm like, I've been out of it. I've, I haven't been like in the loop of tarot for quite some time, but this is one of the, I think this is like the, the last Kickstarter that I was waiting for um, to come in. So it's a very, like, again, you're not getting great, amazing, like, full color, full images, like in the, uh, like in the Marielle, or um, even the Rider Waite Smith, we see these heavily illustrated, like full scene depicted into the cards here. There's a lot of white space, because I think, because I believe this was like, again, this was like a study deck, and a sketch study probably deck maybe in the future he would have made a full deck for himself um and here's of course yeah the ace of diamonds which is on the cover of the box and the uh book as well i, I actually quite like it with the moon and the star under his feet there's something something about it there's something about him um the hand coming out how creepy and then this guy this is a very interesting one it's like how it's drawn he could have drawn it in profile, but he decided to put it, to draw it, like, facing us and facing towards it. There's something, something about it. And then the onk rippling. It remind this reminds me a lot of my very first Rider Waite Smith copy that I got. The very first tarot deck I ever got. Um, and it's the pink onk back Rider Waite Smith. And it looks surprisingly quite a lot like this with the rippling details. Let me, let me get it and show you. Yeah, here it is. Look at look at this. Tell me that's synchronicity, dare I say? I don't know. But and also I have two King of Swords in this deck. But um should I read with it? Is it telling me that I should read with it? No. No, this is a very old, old, old copy. Well it's not super old, but it's like, you know. And I edged it in pink. Like a dumbass. I didn't know how old this was. But um yeah, it's very classic-y looking, and this is also, and the and the Austin Osman Spare is a classic-y deck, almost. It's going to go right up there with the Nap Hall and the uh, even Terror of the Holy Light, but that's not really like a classic deck. That's a modern rendition of old decks. The Atea, I would love a Grand Atea deck one of these days, um, but I have the Egyptian Atea that Los Caraveo made, um, the Rider Waite Smith, uh... What else? There's a few others that, that this deck would go with. Um, and yeah, so you see some of them are quite, are very plain in their depictions. But of course we have here where the words will complete, a, a, where there's part of a word there. Um, so yeah, who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? Like again, like interesting to see what the book says. Who knows when I'll get to reading the book. Um, yeah, how interesting. The King of Diamonds, and he, he's like a satyr imp type guy going on here. Interesting that he put, what is that, six diamonds right there? I believe one of the knaves is supposed to be a self-portrait. I could be wrong. Of the artist he's done quite a few self-portraits um i think but and i think the i think strange attractor press also did an uh, a biography on austin osman spade and i think there might be a few books of his collected artworks or something um but yeah this is one of the more obscure little corners of tarot that just came to uh publication in in, in this in this year uh and is and you know how to read it it's going to be very fortune tellery maybe i really like this page this this page this knave of clubs here uh i don't know why he's again like compared to all the other guys in here i'm like hmm, maybe not i do like this queen she's very i don't know there's something about her same and then like it's just i don't know i don't know what it's about her. yeah i think this is this supposed to be him? No, it's it's probably someone else. Uh, and then this card, I saw this card and I was like, oh, it's it's just like a blank extra card or whatever. No, this is also a card. 
<laughs> this is also something you that is used as a uh, significant or much like this one uh, because there's only yeah all the other cards are colored um, and these two are the blank ones so like when I first got it I was like oh I, I flipped it how the, how the cards are cut it makes it a specific way to shuffle for myself I can feel it like I sh like I want to shuffle them like that that feels really good in the hand if you guys are like, no, this is actually, this deck is made to be shuffled. Yeah, you see, like that, it feels, I can feel the chunkierness to that. This, I can def, right side up, I can definitely feel a much more even one-to-one -one shuffle. It's very glidey, it's not sticky. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, it's going to be an interesting test to see how she reads and how you know it's how it's going to carry on will it go into mass market i think i'm not sure i don't know uh i don't know if it's going to be available uh i don't know if this was just exclusive to kickstarter i can't remember i'm sorry i'm usually better at this but i just wanted to share something here that is like hey it's available i think I believe there should still be copies available after the Kickstarter is done. Uh, how much or how many, I'm not sure. I will try to leave links in the description down below, but I think they're still shipping out Kickstarters. And mind you, uh, it's a slow process for them. Uh, mine came in, when was it, yesterday? Yeah, mine came in yesterday or the day before. Uh, and no, yesterday, because today's Tuesday, yesterday was Monday, yeah, uh, and it was pretty well packaged, no damage to the big box outside, no damage to, to whatever is it, to what was inside, everything came in safe and sound, the box, basic, pretty basic, nothing, like, this was nicer than, than, uh, this. like, this feels thicker than this, like, you can, like, like, this is thick, thick paper almost no not, not 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 like paper but it's a very it's a bit on the flimsy side that's just me you know i think us games is doing much nicer boxes these days um but you know it's that's not the point of this the point of this is to get this very obscure little deck out to the public essentially and to keep a piece of of an occultist a history of occult a piece of occult history, you know, to, to, in 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 the public eye in today in in the now, uh, keeping history alive in a way. Um, but it makes me wonder because again, like I said, this wasn't fully illustrated. I wonder if he would have illustrated a full deck if given the chance, if he wanted to, and illustrate it in a way to show. Um, all those little keywords and all that and to merge them into the art as you know you do a spread of like you know i don't know like these four cards they would read and look as cohesive as possible not like how uh the um what's it called the what's that deck called prisma visions damn and there's another deck that also like it's all one one continuous scene um cosmo visions th does it prisma visions as well um but here you know it would have been something interesting to see the um materia prima by usi they do it on the tops and the sides as well for the uh for the electrons that can connect to the to the to the chemicals to the to the elements jesus can i talk um and so reading this it's like what and also this when i got it i was like oh shouldn't this be like this i have no idea i have no idea i'll have to see i'll have to see how it is um but yeah i'll have to i'll have to read the book like i said i guess i'll just have to read the book and find out um so yeah that's and that's it this is a short one this is a very short one today because yeah whether i will actually read with it i have no idea um as a study deck or a piece of history i'm definitely gonna keep it as a collector's item for sure uh i'll read through the book and if i get 
the desire to read with it, sure. You know what it also reminds me of? The court cards kind of give me the vibe of the Deste cards for some reason. Like, just, I don't know. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be a self-portrait of spot a let me let me let me see let me let me pause and check yeah okay so like there's a comparison like this this is from the book this is on page 100 and here it says uh, on the left a head assumed to be a self-portrait as used on the catalog cover an invitation card for austin spade's exhibition at the bruton gallery in 1907 and on the right a head from austin spade's tarot deck uh, and this is courtesy the magic circle uh, and so this is on the king of clubs uh, so yeah well uh, I mean maybe it's supposed to be him maybe he's I don't know I don't know uh, which I mean you, you can you can see uh, for legal matters gift new plans like again it's like and that's one of the things about fortune telling with cards it's like some of these are like how do you get to that conclusion? How did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but I'm sure there's reasons. I'm sure there's ways, like, I'm sure there's an explanation. And if I might, but again, like, reading with playing cards, that's probably in the future something I would like to do. I'm, I like Lenormand as well, but I haven't used Lenormand in a minute. Um, but it's, it, it's, again, but right now it's like tarot is the mainstay at the moment it's the staple it's the focus of my work with fortune telling with cards and reading cards and all that uh and so uh i i, I you know until i'm done with tarot and like feeling comfortable with saying like oh yeah i'm a i'm well known in tarot you know what i mean like like uh, like not well known that's that's a bit pretentious um what's the word the proper word would be comfortable knowledgeably comfortably not comfortably knowledgeable um in the tarot and be able to you to then to switch over and focus more on playing cards but some people do both and i'm like eh, i kind of want to i'll do a deep dive in playing cards and lenormand and sibylla and kipper in a future thing and, and, and later down the line um and yeah, and so this seems to be blending the two, almost. Um, but we'll have to see. Again, something I'll have to read. This is this is me talking on assumptions and first impressions and not really not really knowing what to do with this deck. And again, not reading the book, not being informed. Uh, and yeah, just a piece to share and to show you what you get with, with the... If you... If, it, when if you get this deck i don't know if, if if i think i believe you can get the deck alone i believe you can get the book alone or the book and the deck together i don't know if that small book uh i don't know where where do i put it is it in the box yeah i put it in the box but that small little gray book i don't know if that is available outside of the kickstarter um but yeah i'll try to link this i'll try to link all the links for if you if you are curious and want to get your hands on this deck and you think that this is the perfect deck to read with if you want to read with it I don't know um, let me just you know I'll put the links in the description down below if you want the book as well I believe the book will be available like mass market like you can get on Barnes and Noble Amazon wherever you get books as well in a paperback version as well so it's much more affordable and readily available for for more people um, so yeah there you go so. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell when I go live or I upload another video. I think right now one of my videos is uploading while I record this. And uh, yeah, it's a very long, long rambly video, which I'm not even sure if it's going to be coherent or understandable, but I hope it's expl ex explanatory. Anyways, you'll see when it's uploaded. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.